Tim Berners-Lee says he did not have a eureka moment in 1989. The invention of the web came after years of learning from his experience on various projects. He recognized the frustration and complications of trying to share information from different computer systems and wanted to solve the dilemma. Finally, while working at CERN in Geneva, he did. There I was at CERN and I had all those pieces sort of in my brain from other projects. Couldn't we just make one? Can't we just imagine a grand unified documentation system which would include them all? And it shouldn't be that difficult. And it wasn't. And it was a very, you know, the web is a very simple system. Today, the web is considered one of computing's most influential innovations. It is used by billions of people daily to communicate, access information, and perform and share countless activities. To make such an information-sharing system possible, Berners-Lee invented the integrated tools that would become the foundation of the World Wide Web, HTTP, URLs, HTML, and the web browser. The web was also intended to allow individuals to share information to solve world problems. How does humanity come up with an interesting idea when the problem is in lots of people's heads and different parts of the solution are in different people's heads? And they are all sitting, looking at their screens, <laughs> ready to type, ready to chat, ready to code up visualization software, ready to run programs uh, that will look for correlations. Uh, they're trying to solve cancer, you're trying to solve global warming. Part of the, the goal of the web was to be a really powerful tool for allowing many brains to be better than one brain. Berners-Lee warns there is a constant threat surrounding control of the web. Some unholy mix of government and companies often tries to control the web, so we always have to be aware of that. And the web hasn't turned out exactly as he had hoped. On the 28th anniversary of the web earlier this year, Berners-Lee cited issues with losing control of our personal data, the spread of misinformation, and the need for transparency with online political advertising. For the first tw uh, 20 years of the web, it was really exciting to see all the things, all the crazy things like Wikipedia and OpenStreetMap and things like that, which people were building on top of the web. And my assumption was that if we just keep the web open, just keep it neutral, uh, keep it royalty free, then innovation will bloom and people will build really, really valuable social systems for both science and democracy. Now, looking back just over these last couple of years, uh, obviously people have been using the web in some ways where it isn't about science, it's about untruths, it isn't about democracy, it's about unreasonable just manipulation of the audience. And so, yeah, I think, um, so my attitude has changed. I feel that people who look at the web and analyze the web and build the web need to think about that and they need to really look at the way social networks work and they need to take responsibility when they build a social network for making, looking at the bad things that happen on them and then maybe reprogramming it so that just changing it so that it works in a slightly different way. Despite these challenges, the World Wide Web has had an enormous impact on our society. And ACM recognizes the web as a contribution of lasting and major technical importance. It is for this reason Sir Tim Berners-Lee has been named recipient of the 2016 AM Turing Award on the 50th anniversary of the prize. Winning the Turing Award is very humbling. I think it if I could suddenly meet Alan Turing now, the first thing I'd do was be apologize for what happened to him, what uh, the British culture of the time did. I'd explain to him that actually uh, that being gay is okay now, uh, and uh, we're, that we're not in a perfect place, but we've come a, come a long way. Obviously, it would be great to talk about, it would be good to just sit him down with a with a powerful debugger so that he can see all the variables uh, at the height of a language changing in real time. In 2004, Berners-Lee was knighted by Queen Elizabeth II for his work. He has received many other prestigious accolades, but one that he remembers in great detail is his honor at the 2012 Summer Olympics opening ceremony in London, where he reminded the world that the web is for everyone. The whole thing was done as a stage show. And I said, can I tweet that at the same time? 
And I felt that when I was pressing that button, I was doing it for all the geeks, uh, for all the people who were not going to end up in that Olympic stage of <laughs> until the closing ceremony. You had to be kind of sporty. And then I, I felt I was a representative of all the software uh, technology world. Berners-Lee says it has taken all of us to build the web we have. And now it's up to all of us to build the web we want for everyone. If you're a web developer, then uh, it's good to spend 90% of your time developing web pages, developing you know, cool, cool JavaScript software and so on. But then maybe for the other 10% of your time, you just think about, OK, but am I taking for granted the fact that this, I have this new web, uh, I have net neutrality? Am I taking for granted the fact that uh, my users will be able to use my site? Should I actually be joining groups where I get informed about uh, issues? Should I be spending a bit of that time to defend the integrity of the, the web we're all using? Because uh, if we just take it for granted, it will go away. We feature Sir Tim Berners-Lee in the June 2017 Communications of the ACM.